Good morning, everybody. We are live with Prepper Talk Radio on AM 630 K-Talk. News, media, awesomeness, everything. We're excited to be here. I hope you're excited to be here. we uh, got a pretty good show for you. I'm always excited to be here. So Shane, the prepared guy, and you know me, Mr. PrepperCon. I'm getting fingers waved at me. Bring it down a little bit. Bring it down a little bit. I got the headphones on. Scott forgot his headphones today, so. I've been cutting commercials. It's commercial week. Now bring bring the the, the uh, simian down. Bring that down. There we go. Background's a little too loud. There we go. Happy now? I'm happy now. All right. Welcome to Prepper Talk Radio, everybody. The bickering has begun. <laughs> yes. Scott and I, you know, we are very good friends, but we have quite opposite opinions on many cases on certain things. What? And Am no. I? <laughs> of course we do. That's how life is. That's right. As well as you should with all of your friends. That's how all couples, they bicker and they quarrel, right? <laughs> Awkward silence. We're a couple Awkward now? Pause. Well, Does your wife and you, my wife know about depends this? Depends on what you consider Did I know couple. about this? You weirdo. <laughs> hey, we got an awesome show. We're talking winter prep. We're talking uh, fall prep. We're fall talking prep. Again, this is our, our, kits. our third week talking about, in general, this type of prep. Uh, the seasonal prep stuff. Seasonal, very good, yeah. And the reason we're doing that is, is this is this this weekend is kind of my lifelong mm-hmm. trigger time. Mm-hmm. Of this is when I go through my bags, I go through my car kits, and I transition to the fall and winter gear. Um, you should be checking your bag monthly, especially if you're using mm-hmm. anything in it, um, because there's always a case where you might need to change something. But you should also be checking your house, checking all the things you're taking care of, your stewardship, if you will. To make sure you've got what you need, and that's what emphasis. Thing I w- yeah, uh, that you've very, got yeah, what you need, and 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 that comes from having the right gear, having the right knowledge, and having the right resources. Speaking of resources, this show is brought to you by our awesome friends at Survival Medical, who have knocked out the old way of, of first aid. Um, I knocked it out, submitted it, thrown it off the bus, whatever you want to call it. They've actually figured out a way to actually extend all of your first aid stuff. So instead of a a kit that lasts you a year and a half, maybe up to two years, then the Band-Aids don't stick and the gels don't disinfect anymore and they're just everything's powder or broken, they've got an up to 20-year shelf life first aid system. Everything, all their kits. You can open them, close them. They've got this little tablet inside that that actually holds the, uh, the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. In perfect conditions to keep these things lasting longer. Um, I don't know the full science on it, but it's it's been very impressive. Um, you can check them out. Survival Medical is online at survival-medical.com, but you can also go to the Murray um, Sam's, Sam's Club, Club right off mm-hmm. State Street and about 215, just south of two, mm-hmm. 215. Love that place. It's awesome. Check them out. You will be so happy because it's one of those things that you can actually get and it will give you peace of mind. It'll give you the stuff you need when you need it. Everything's labeled. It's easy to use. Designed for a dummy like me. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not a medical guy. Mm. I'm not. No, that, uh, I see you your know. point, though. Other things I'm awesome at. Shelter building? Psh, I grew up in a general contractor's house. So if I don't know how to build a shelter, mm-hmm. I'd probably have been disowned. But I'm not the first aid guy. My wife's better at mm-hmm. first aid than I am, so she knows all this stuff better. But this stuff is easy enough that I can just figure it out and use it. Yeah. And, and that really kind of brings up the first thing I wanted to warm up on today is the word balance, you know, comes to mind. Um, and, uh, you know, being a – what I, I want to be full-time prepper, I guess you could call it, um, and trying to balance uh, all the skills, all the talents, all the tools, all the supplies you need to be adequately prepared or self-sufficient, I guess, is more um, – the right term and still not be a weirdo a fanatic a crazy uh type of prepper uh and maybe be overly heavy on certain skills and lacking on others that's something i continually struggle with is is this balance i guess i just call it balance um now i know that maybe i feel a little heavy on on certain skills and definitely light on others. Like last week, we talked about gardening. I'm definitely light on gardening and food production. So I need to put more focus uh, on that to balance out my skill set, I guess you could say. Well, there's also the harmony element, right? Harmony. Now, you can you can be super tactical, mm-hmm. you know, like our friend Jeff. He is Mr. Yeah. Tactician. Well, everything leads to that because he grew up 
focus on a military mm-hmm. career, mm-hmm. focus on an operative career, um, and, and everything and is very tactical. And so that mindset's just been enhanced, right? There's nothing wrong with that. You know, then you look at one of my good friends, John, who he's got a little tactical, but he is Mr. I can do anything in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Wilderness survival, off-grid living. He he can do medical tinctures. Like, he, he can tell you what herbs do what, mm-hmm. how to use them, when to use them, when not to use them. Um, but he's got his imbalance, right? Mm-hmm. But when you put these guys together, you put me with them, you put you with them, you know, you get your group – and you get your group based on, on trust first mm-hmm. and then skill second. Um, right. You get your group of people together, and, and now you've got resources and you've got balance. You've got harmony. If you have no one that knows medical, you're screwed. Yep. If you have no one that knows how to grow food, you're, you're really screwed. screwed. If you're in a wilderness survival situation and you don't know how to start a fire and it's cold and it's getting colder mm-hmm. and you don't have shelter, adequate shelter, or enough something for a windbreak or something mm-hmm. to keep the water off you – you're screwed. And so it's always good. You know, that's why in scouts we learn the buddy system. Two, two brains are better than one, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. except for when they're 12 to 13 years old. <laughs> then it's questionable. It might be one brain add, combined add, between add the two of them, and, that. and yes. you're good. But you've, you've always got to work on balance and finding other people that can work with you to, that can fill the gaps. Mm-hmm. Um, but then as, as often as you can, and this is something Shane's good at, as often as you can, study up. Learn something new expand in your repertoire. Yeah, and that's why I love getting ready for the show. Is coming here talking is is brushing up on the topics and and uh, doing my uh prep before the show and say, "Oh yeah, I I remember that now and it becomes more ingrained in my psyche and and uh I can use it more uh, effectively every day." And I guess also with balance <coughs> I I see, okay, how do I balance, you know, work and home life, family life and prepping and all the stuff we have on the side that we're trying to build other businesses and so forth. Yep. That is just, for me, a constant struggle. Uh, I haven't blogged since the 1st of September. I haven't posted a blog since the 1st of September. And it's For almost the end shame. Of September. I know. I try and do it. Couple, <laughs> I used to try and do it uh, you know, twice a week at least, and now yeah, it's been more than a few weeks. So I'm feeling out of balance, I must say. You I know, need to that's write. normal. I, I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's a natural occurrence we all go through, um, especially in prepping uh, if you look at your list of things that you've got you know we, we like to keep track of what we have we like to keep track mm-hmm. inventory um, and the list of lives. the things that we need and we look at the things we need the things we have the things that you know someone tells us about and all of a sudden goes on the list mm-hmm. it, it can mm-hmm. be overwhelming can be stressful and that's where most of the beginner preppers um, people who are just waking up or just starting to say okay i need to be better prepared that's where they get overwhelmed mm-hmm and so I want you to take the show and take the comments that we bring to the table. And, and callers, if you've got comments on this and, and ideas on how to be better balanced and how to be uh, better aware and what to do at this time in your life based on what's going on, how to be better prepared, you know, how to take this in bite-sized chunks. We're going to talk about that today as well. Um, but we're going ta- to take it really small today, and we're going to talk about seasonal prep and how to transition from the summer prep to this to this fall winter prep because it changes quite drastically Mm -hmm. and you need to make sure you've got the right stuff in your car so that if something does happen or say you come across an accident you can help respond you can help take care of those people till additional resources come or say there's a power outage you know we just had a tornado Mm -hmm. are you kidding me utah's (laughs) never gonna have a tornado so we had one what 99 two in the same yeah yeah back in 90 something yeah. 90 something yeah and then and then two on the same day. we'll never have another tornado again it doesn't happen in utah blah blah Ru- well, yeah mm-hmm. two of them mm-hmm. one of them went through what riverdale mm-hmm. the other one was down in Panguitch. you know not good people now those people now have no homes so in some cases they had to be evacuated others just didn't have power there's no power to thirty-seven thousand people Thirty that many. That's what the oh, that's right. That's what they said on the radio, mm-hmm. and that's what they said on the news. Right, right. Thirty-seven thousand people without uh, without power, and I think it was just for twenty-four hours. But still, to think of how cold your house can get in the middle of winter in twenty-four hours. Yeah. Now this was, you know, the storm ended. It was cold. It was probably forty-eight degrees that night, but it wasn't mm-hmm. freezing. Mm-hmm. How do you keep warm? Yep. And you know, if it were freezing, then we'd be more concerned about about pipes or you know freezing and so forth, but. Um, 
you know, obviously right now it's 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 definitely the time to start getting ready for that so that your mindset. Now, if you think l- think back to like the pioneers and to our our forefathers and founders and so forth, you know, how did they get through it? I mean, what did they do? That's where my mind kind of leads me is look toward the past in order to prepare for the future or potential rough times. So how did they keep their homes warm? How did they live through the winter? How did they, you know, because obviously they had just as tough or harder winters than we did, than we do, uh, without as many great resources and technology that we have now. And I think one of the benefits was they they had a simpler way of life. Absolutely. Um, we've got pipes throughout our whole house. If it mm-hmm. freezes, you got to watch out for all those mm-hmm. pipes or go turn the water off yep. at the drain source. Pipes and you know, safest thing, obviously, drain the pipes, turn off the source mm-hmm. before before night, every night, and then turn it back on in the morning when or it's warm. Or let out. it run all night long, which is not a good option. Yeah, expensive. Um, the other thing is, is, and this is one of the things I love with the newer homes, is they've actually got the water panel. So you've actually got... Okay, right. Like you can a turn off... manifold. A manifold, thank you. You can turn off mm-hmm. water at, to different sections of the house so that you're only having to keep a certain section warm, mm-hmm. you know, and if you've got a, an extra, you know, wood-burning stove or furnace system that's a backup, Boom. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, Bob's your uncle, everything's taken care of. But for the most of most part, none of us have that. Yeah, and, and also I think another thing you could do is, like in my house, I'm in an older home and with copper piping, so it's not off a manifold system. So what that means is uh, there's one long line, and at the very end of the line is the last sink. Yep. <laughs> and so you could turn that sink on, and most all of the pipes should flow so that you don't get uh, a, any particular pipe that's going to freeze. So if you've identified which sink takes the longest to get hot when you turn the hot water on. That's my bathroom. Which is for us our kitchen sink. Oh, uh, We just leave that running, and, and most of the pipes sh- should flow and not freeze you know, in, a, in an out- outage like that. Or yet, uh, probably a better option, turn your water off uh, at the main valve and turn some faucets on some in the basement and drain the water out of those pipes so they don't freeze. Exactly. So before the break hits, which is going to hit in the next few minutes, Let's let's start talking about the things we need to transition and the things that we mm-hmm. need to start changing. Okay. Um, I, I like to start first with my everyday carry. Mm-hmm. For those of you who don't know what everyday carry is, or EDC is, it's you'll see it all over the internet. EDC, what's in your EDC? Or mm-hmm. you'll also hear pocket check. Um, it's the things that you have with you or or near you at all times. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a bag in the car. I also carry a few different items on me. Um, but some of those things you need to make sure you're changing. Mm-hmm. Um, now, some people will change the way they carry their firearm because they're changing the way they dress. Yep. So if you uh, have to have wear a tuck, tucked-in shirt and you don't want to have a have a, a tucked-in concealable, you know, inside the waistband holster, uh, you can transition to, you know, wearing sweaters or wearing something longer sleeve, long sleeve that, that covers your, your belt, and you can wear an open carry holster, which can tend to be more comfortable, at least switching it up and... and uh, changing your wardrobe a little bit so that's one thing that comes right to mind uh is wearing i love jackets i mm-hmm. love wearing you know long sleeve in the in the cooler weather which then makes it easier to conceal yeah you can you can transition to a shoulder host holster yep or an inside the shirt holster the little the, there's like tank top versions of holsters that they're form-fitting and they've got pockets so you can you can put a firearm in um as well as other fun things mm-hmm. but there's a lot of different ways you can do that um there's also different ways you can carry your stuff for example during the summer, spring, I have a small bag in my car. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have extra wool blankets. Right. I don't have extra wool socks. I don't have, you know, a parka. I don't have, you know, I don't have this huge plethora, cornucopia, if you will, of additional items. But as soon as the fall hits, mm-hmm. oh, you bet. It's stocked up. My, up. My, my big jacket's now in the back seat. My, I've got extra ponchos, extra blankets. In fact, the Utah game that just they beat the mm-hmm. USC a week ago, I was at that game, and it was r- said it wasn't going to rain. It was going to be done raining by 6 o'clock. Psh, yeah, right. So I had two emergency blankets in my pockets, two ponchos in my pockets, because I had a buddy with me, and he would invited me to the game. He was very kind. Um, and so I had stuff not just for me but for him, um, and that's because he's got limitations. Uh, good neighbor, awesome kid, but he's got limitations. He doesn't, he doesn't have the mindset to think about personal mm-hmm. preparedness. Mm-hmm. Um, he can't drive himself, can't do a lot of things, but he is one of the most amazing fans I've ever seen, and he is one of the most cheerful people I know. And so I'm like, I got to keep this kid cheerful. Mm-hmm. I got to keep this kid happy and safe. So I had an emergency blanket for him. I had an extra poncho for him. I had all this other stuff to help him be prepared as well. And guess what? We ended up using the ponchos 
We ended up using, and we had nice big coats on, nice wool socks on, nice big boots. We had all this stuff, but it wasn't enough. And thankfully, I brought the extra stuff. So we're going to talk about that when we get back from the break. Right, we'll Keep tuning in. We're, we're brought to you by Survival Medical. Check them out at Sam's Club on State Street in 215. I-15. Yeah, I-215. Oh, 215. 15 and State don't cross. I am right. <laughs> we'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. Well, welcome back to Prepper Talk Radio on AM 630, K-Talk Media. Check out the new website, ktalkmedia.com. It's getting better every day. We're adding more content. Um, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Um, Prepper Talk Radio. Pretty easy to find. And uh, the coolest thing about it is we're just like you. We're just everyday guys doing everyday jobs, and we have a cool radio show. Painfully normal. Everyday. Painfully normal. <laughs> I don't know. I, I enjoy it. So <laughs> absolutely, as a, absolutely. As a wonderful reminder, uh, this is we've got general conference coming up this next weekend. This that's a, a Utah thing. I guess, I guess really it's a global thing. But in Utah, mm-hmm. it's like you hear about it, you hear about it. So it's really easy for us to remember. Okay, time to rotate my stuff. Every mm-hmm. time you hear about conference, because nope, that's about absolutely. the time seasons change. I've always just said, oh, conference weekend, change all my stuff. Um, and in the meantime, while you're waiting for, for this weekend to change stuff, you can actually start now. I think it's a good idea to right. start now. But uh, check out Survival Medical. These guys have the best first aid kits. It's the only first aid kit, tougher than nature. They're in the Utah Sam's Clubs right now. They're in Murray. Check them out. They've got a cool display that actually explains how cool the product is. shows you know it's waterproof. It's, it's windproof. It's, it, it's going to last a long time. They've got up to 20-year life on these products. Um, check them out over at Sam's Club on State Street and I-215. They'll be there for another probably seven days, I think. But get there now. Get your stuff. Um, and then go get yourself ready. Get things taken care of. If you procrastinate getting things taken care of, you will be screwed if something unknown happens and you're not prepared. That's why we prepare. We try to prepare for as many possible things we can so that you don't have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. So that you can actually be a resource... Um, when something happens, yeah, that's rather than a drain. That's uh, why I brought up the balance. You know, where do we yep. find the balance? And I think that also comes into okay. Um, I've got X amount of this supply and X amount of that supply. What do I need next? I mean, where uh, where's my priority? That do I have? Do I have too much ammo? I have too many guns at this point, uh, or do I need more wheat? Do I need more uh, flour or rice? You know, those types of. That's that's always tricky for me <coughs> to to figure out for our family needs is the balance of supplies according to the funds that are coming in okay what do we apply that to next yep do we uh uh add a wood burning stove to the house so that's yeah, that's where i want this kind of conversation to go today is toward okay how do we keep the house i mean we, i want to talk about that anyway well before let's before <coughs> we get into I'm, that I'm let's gonna lead let's the conversation keep talking. you're like I, hijack I, I and tend switch to hijack. off we're still talking about yes. winter prep things you need to be getting ready for um and yes, prioritizing is important, but y- you've also got to realize, okay, what's what's in someone's budget? Everyone has a budget to take care of themselves. What they end up doing with it is the problem. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot yes. of times friends will be like, well, I want to go on this trip to so-and-so, such yep. and such. Instead, it's more important. Okay, well, what happens if you lose your job in the meantime? Mm-hmm. How are you going to survive? You know, that's why we talk about emergency preparedness. It's not w- just the scenario of what if the power goes out all over the city because of an earthquake or what mm-hmm. if... What if there's a tornado and, and you're displaced? It's any kind of, of life-changing scenario. What if you're not planning on having a kid and all of a sudden you've got a kid? You know, It's the everyday there's things. There's crazy I mean. things that can happen all the time. So we're talking right now specifically fall and winter changes. So I'm, gonna go, I'm just going to go through my list right. real quickly. Cool. Things that I always make sure I have additional of as soon as the weather gets cold. Um, additional wool socks. An additional warm change of clothes. So in the summer, I might have an extra pair of utility pants, mm-hmm. lightweight, um, breathable, zip off where I can actually have them into shorts or whatever I want to use them for. In the winter, I have my heavy duty, mm-hmm. you know, my Carhartts, my my Dickies, my tougher pants, um, thicker, warmer. That's going to keep me, b- you know, better insulated against the cold. Um, jackets and coats, waterproofed, mm-hmm. knit hats. I love wool hats. In the winter, you've got to have extra wool hats. Because you'll freeze if you don't have them. Um, and wool is great. I love wool of any kind. Wool blankets, wool gloves. Um, and if you want to get more more technical, there's there's other products you can get that are even better. Mm-hmm. But this is on a, on a dime. Yeah, absolutely. You know, on, a on a dime, on a budget, this is always going to take care of you. Um, hand and feet warmers. Mm-hmm. 
I have a pack of those in the car all winter long. Um, you can get them at the end of the su- at the end of the winter, and you can get them usually super discounted. But you always got to watch out because expiration dates are usually really short when those come in. Um, always make sure you're also in your car. You've got your first aid kit. You've got a car jumper kit, um, and you know how to use them. Mm-hmm. You've got your tire change kit and a blanket to throw down that you can lay on because most likely the yeah. ground's going to be wet that's or icy. I was, or I was going to make sure to bring that up. Is bring something that's you know kind of waterproof. Mm-hmm. That you can throw down on the ground if you have to get under your car for, for you know to change a tire or whatever that you're not going to get wet. That's going to protect you from the wet road, the snow, and so forth. I think that's yeah, that's something I always have in my vehicle. I, I don't like to get dirty. I mean, y- yeah, even in the summer, I have that down so I can you know if I need to crawl around under my vehicle, but I, I don't want to get dirt, dirtying it back in the car. Exactly. So, and for me, it's about everyday stuff. It's not just about emergencies because yeah, an emergency can happen and you may or may not be prepared for it, but. Are you prepared for the everyday little things? Like, oh, I need a pen. I mean, yes, I always have a pen on me. That sounds stupid <laughs> and silly, but I but always have it. a pen. Exactly. And in the winter, if you just leave it in your car all the time, it might freeze and you may not be able to write with it. Mm-hmm. So you want to keep one on you as best you can. I, I'm constantly carrying bags in and out of my vehicle. Yep. And it's a bit of a curse. but. So here's here's some other ones. Um, a, mummy, a mummy bag, a Mylar mummy bag. Mm-hmm. Um, I think those are great. You can still throw a wool blanket around you. This will mm-hmm. just reflect heat back yeah. into you better. If you know, if you if you're, you're short on space, yeah. Um, otherwise, just throw one of your sleeping bags in there. Not all of us have that much room in their car, though. Yeah, exactly. You if, know, you, if so you're not short on space, just keep a sleeping bag. Yeah, in there. get a couple of things in your car just so that you've got them, and not just for you by yourself. But if you ever have anyone with you, it's good to have extra stuff mm-hmm. because then they're taken care of as well. Um, one of my favorite things to do is I actually rotate my food. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go through my MREs and I'll pull out the ones that are getting closer to their lifespan. So do you eat them at that point? I usually eat them. Mm-hmm. So conference weekend is my eating my MREs, um, sometimes eating my like the SOS food rations. Um, sometimes I take those to scouts and show the scouts what those will do. And they're it. like, yeah. oh, it's not so bad. And I'm like, yeah, it's not so bad. It tastes like a sugar cookie. It's great. I love mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it depends on what you have. But I always like to put heartier foods and more calories mm-hmm. um, in during the winter because with the cold, you're going to be burning more calories just to stay alive. So I always increase my foods and increase my fuels. So I, I make sure I take my water in and out of the house mm-hmm. every time I go in the car because I don't want it to freeze. And that's one thing is, is I think people don't think about is is ke- having water in your vehicle during the winter because you can dehydrate just as fast or faster in the winter uh, if you're outside doing, uh, you know, fixing your vehicle or walking to a safe place, getting away from, you know, being stuck in your vehicle. Uh, then you know in the summer, so you need to have that water. And like Scott says, you know, it, if it freezes up, it's not any good for you. Yep. And, and we always hear about the, you know, which is a bit of a myth. Okay, don't eat the snow uh, because it's going to s- take away your heat. And, and that's absolutely true. If you're if if you don't have appropriate shelter, if you don't, you know, if you're not, if you're cold, you're getting hypothermic. Yeah, don't eat the snow. If you've got plenty of body heat and you're you're hot and you're, you're exercising, sure, go ahead and eat the snow. You've got plenty of calories. You know, it, it takes a lot of calories to convert that snow into water. So keep yep. that in mind, but just keeping water is going to is going to avoid you from having to eat that snow mm-hmm. uh, to, to hydrate yourself. So, water very important in the winter and summer. And always have extra extra containers. You know, I, okay. I found yep. that one of the biggest challenges is you get a water bottle um, and you're like, yeah, we're set, and then mm-hmm. you're, you're sharing it amongst other people and Let's whatever go. whatever you've got going on. If they're sick, now you're going to be sick. Okay. So you want to yep. take care of the you know germs and 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 those issues, but have an extra container too because if you do have to do snow mm-hmm. you know you can put the snow in that container and let it melt, it melt. before you put it in your body yeah that's you know change change the temperature as much as you can because you can just have that sitting in your lap mm-hmm. um, and take the radiant heat from your body that might be excess mm-hmm. you know or mm-hmm. put it in the l- inside the car with you where you're warmer. warmer and that excess heat will be warming that up as well so utilize cross utilize everything you can that's the whole key um, I always say duct tape duct tape is so important. Mm-hmm. Our good buddy over at Every Man Preparedness, um, Spencer, he actually has a video online. We should probably share this. He did a winter exercise where he went out and he pretended his car broke down mm-hmm. and he had to sleep there overnight. And he set up mylar blankets in the windows, on the roof, and basically created a little cocoon of heat. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't great, mm-hmm. but it wasn't that bad. And this is snowy night. There was probably three feet of snow. He was up by, by Park City. Cold, cold situation but he just wanted to see what it's like and he filmed it yes yeah, it's, it's like having a tent out in the wilderness you can eat more easily heat up that tent uh it's also you know in the, in the caving world uh, if you're in a big cave and you're in there for an extended amount of time you build 
take a tent or build a mylar blanket type shelter that mm-hmm. you can heat up that small area. And it also definitely applies to your home. And I'm kind of leading this conversation along uh, to staying warm in your home. Yep. Uh, pick a, a particular room that maybe stays warmer uh, because the sun is hitting it from the south or west side and heat that room individually uh, rather than trying to heat your entire room. If, you know, obviously your power goes out, you're, you're not going to be able to run your furnace. Uh, so that's, you know, one technique that is all tied together is, is use your resources and use your brains. Mm-hmm. Use your common sense. And make it fun. Yeah, absolutely. You know, everyone That's loves camping to a degree, you know, either whether they want to go real camping or they want to go glamping where it's all mm-hmm. nice. And mm-hmm. Bring your tent in, ho- in your home. Your kids are going to love it. They're going to be less afraid of what's going on. They're going to be more excited about what you're doing by creating a, an environment of peace and tranquility. And they're going to be able to get through psychologically that downtime. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Send a te- set a tent up in your home. Yeah, heat the tent up in that one room you're trying to keep warm. Yeah, in your in in that one room, set it up. Make that where everyone sleeps. Make that where everyone communes. Kids are gonna love it. You can have a little lantern in there, and you can talk stories and mm-hmm. and really get to know them better. That's what's one of the coolest things about survival situations. Yeah, you really get to know the person you're with. You know, you really find out you what they're made quality of. Quality time with them. Quality, quality and time. You know what, and you and I were talking about this a little bit the other week. You know what? Yeah, if there's a collapse, man, bring it on. We're ready. Just bring it, you know, because I want to spend some quality time with my family. I want to stop working. I want to s- sit down in a room with my family and, and you know, want to read scriptures and, and talk and play games and have fun. And bring it on, I tell you. To bring on the collapse. I'm ready for it. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm ready for it. But, you know, as we're mentally, talking about this, mentally if you've I'm got things that we're missing that you think, hey, we need to make sure people think about this this fall, give us a call. Um, join in on the conversation. We'd love to have you here and, and, well, I guess not in studio, but get on the phone. Join us. Um, we're, we're, we're passionate about this, so you might be tuning in and going, what the heck are these guys talking about? And why are they so excited about a collapse? Or why are they so excited about <laughs> the energy going out or the, the entire grid just <laughs> gone? Well, well, just think if, you, if the power goes out and, you know, for 24 hours or, or, or longer, how are you going to heat your home? And how are you going to use your sewer? Yep. Here's the thing. All of all the water is force-pumped into our homes. We're not living off gravity-fed pressure systems. Because our grid's so big, everything is is manually pressurized. And ultimately, that's true because, say, like in Orm, we have water tanks sitting high on the hill, so everything is gravity-fed. But to get the water to those tanks, it has to be pumped out of the ground. But there's also pressurized systems to keep all the businesses going because your business water systems mm-hmm. pull a lot more water than your homes, your residential. So they have to force so additional water So because it's all on pressure. the same system, they have, to f- they have to pressurize the entire network. So as soon as there's an issue and there's no pressurization of the network, mm-hmm. you still have gravity fed to a degree. Mm-hmm. But once that's gone, it's gone. And that'll go quickly when right. the whole city's counting on it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but the point is, is how are you going to flush your toilet? Mm-hmm. Where's that sewage going to go if there's no receptacle receiving it? And especially in winter away? when you need to dig a little outhouse outside. So be prepared that you may have to dig a latrine. We actually have a caller. Let's bring him on the air. Hey, thanks for calling K-Talk. You're on the air. Yeah, you guys were talking about how to heat possibly your home if the power goes out for a while. Yeah. I, uh, I'm i kind of a prepper, too. I've got a lot of coal and a lot of wood, but that kind of was bothering me one day, so I got on YouTube. Besides you guys and all the info that you give us, YouTube's got some really good stuff, too. There was, yeah. uh, you know, the the balloon tanks that you used to blow up, the helium balloons? Yeah. And those are done with and discarded. There's actually some YouTube videos that show how you can make a uh, real cheap, inexpensive, uh, small wood-burning stove for each room in your home. Okay. And I've actually done that. And then... I thought Home Depot would sell the uh, stove piping, you know, the triple wall, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to just take out a window. Right. But they don't. They, I guess for liability reasons or you, something. They don't sell it. But Cal Ranch does. Okay, cool. Or I've even gotten it at the DI for real cheap. Oh, nice. Really? So that is I've, my... I've got, I've got uh, four rooms, and I've got all four of those small little stoves set up out in my barn and my shed. That's fantastic. Pipe. It, ready to go if anything happens. It would be great if you posted a picture of that to our Facebook page. That would be very cool. And maybe the YouTube uh, 
Yeah, um, maybe the YouTube video. Video that I watched. It was yeah. only a 50 yeah. minute video. Yeah, so yeah, share that on our page. That would be awesome. So yeah, Great everybody resource. needs to have a plan of how to heat their home. So uh, what I'm doing this winter is I'm pulling out the gas insert in our house. Yes. And now my wife is going to freak out about this. Pulling out the gas insert and getting a wood burning stove. I'm going to install that where the where the gas insert is. Uh, but also a, a more economical way of doing that is like you're saying you could take those little gas cylinders, uh, or you can take 55 gallon drums. Jump on on Amazon and you can find a 55 gallon drum uh, wood burning stove kit. So essentially you cut in a front d- access door to it. You cut in a vent. You've got it's, it has comes with feet that you can you can get it up off the floor and you can even do a double 55 gallon drum kit. So you have a secondary drum above it. That helps radiate more heat, and then you vent it out to, like, yeah, like, like you say, a window. At worst case, maybe your back screen door, or, or if you have an, a gas insert fireplace, swap it out there and, and get that some of that double or triple wall uh, vent piping to rent it out the out the ceiling. You can get that vent piping or even the cylinder type stove, the the, the double stack mm-hmm. over at uh, Smith and Edwards. Actually, oh, okay, they've got them cool. as well. They've got your, all your own kind of build it your own kits you can do. Um, another good resource is our good friends over at Cylinder Stoves. They've oh got yeah. cool. That's a nice Utah company. Yeah, They've got some really cool, cool options, all different sizes. Um, yeah, and you, you can, can even order that. just a window kit. You can vent that just like a cooktop, a wood burning oven. I mean, it's mm-hmm. that. Oh, that's cool. That's a good idea. Yeah, phenomenal. So find a way to keep your family warm this winter. Join us in the conversation. If you want to call in, um, we're about to head to break, but the number to call in is 801-254-5855. 801-254-5855. We love your contribution so far. We love doing the show. It's all about helping you be better prepared. We don't want to talk all the time. We want to talk to you guys. So we're heading into commercial. We're brought to you by Survival Medical. That's survival-medical.com. The next 11 days, they're going to be at Sam's Club off 215 and State Street. So we'll be right back after the break. Hey, welcome back to Prepper Talk Radio on KTalk AM 630. Brought to you by Survival Medical, the only survival kit, or sorry, the only first aid kit, tougher than nature. They're in Utah Sam's Club. They're going to be at the State Street and I-215 Sam's Club for the next 11 days. So get over there and check it out. Uh, We're talking winter preparedness. It's kind of switching out your gear, and we've got a caller on line three. Let's bring him on the air. Hey, thanks for calling K-Talk. You're on the air. Thank you. Um... Uh, what you've been talking about reminds me of a few things. Uh, I, I love the movie, the, the Book of Eli, mm-hmm. starring Denzel Washington. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a comment he makes, or someone makes, about how that uh, people were killing each other over things that, uh, like plastic gallon jugs, when they used to throw such things away. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it's too bad that a lot of the corporations are ran on money and it's all about money um i had an experience my family had an experience where uh we didn't have enough m- money to pay the uh the gas bill and so i got turned off and so we came up with the ingenious idea i guess if you will to fill up uh this is during the summer of course to fill up gallon jugs and uh from after we drank the milk from them to fill them up with water and put them out uh, on the balcony to uh, heat them up on the in the sun and thus we uh, had somewhat of a uh, warm shower that we were able to take. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, you you a mother of necessity. How does that go? Is is the necessity is the mother of invention? There we go. There you go. That's necessity being the mother of invention. So you you took them out during the day. You would take those those containers out put them in the sun to get them warmed up and use you you'd use that for your personal cleaning hygiene right i would just you know took the gallon, gallon drug in the in the uh shower and poured it over your head and thus uh warm sh- warm shower but uh you know the wife didn't uh didn't like that happening for for quite an extensive period of time so i could see the point of uh of what you guys are doing is uh uh uh, suggesting different ways to, uh, uh, you know, solar energy or different ways mm-hmm. to pre- pre- prepare for uh, when uh, the lights go out. In fact, you know, an EMP strike that shut off the power all over the, the country and caused a lot of havoc. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know if that's something you guys get into, but 
you know, that's a, always a possibility as, as to how it could happen. Yeah, absolutely. And we do talk about, you know, EMP and that, those types of concerns on a regular basis, uh, or occasionally, I should say. But he, here's something that came to my mind is, now, I, I'm going to be putting in a, a, a wood-burning stove, not a fireplace, but a wood-burning stove that it better radiates heat. And what I can do, what I've seen done online, is actually taking copper tubing, copper piping, and wrapping that stove, at least the size of that stove, in order to heat water do, as a dual purpose. So you can cook on it. So it has a flat top to cook on it. It heats the house, and you can warm up water all at the same time and uh, use it as efficiently as possible. Yep. Always want I love that that you called in because it kind of helps us remember that we can get creative. You know, there's a lot of different things. You know, YouTube. Our, our prior caller he found a video on YouTube to help him put in. You know, these different types of stoves. There's so many different things you can do, and you just got to get creative. But if you're starving and if you're hungry and if you can't function, you can't get creative and you it's can't come up with solutions. Yeah. So that's, right. so that's what we you got to have things prepared ahead of time, and uh, you know, there's. Trillions of uh, gigawatts going away with, with with not tapping into the sun, and it's, I'm surprised that mm-hmm. that uh, uh, I'm sure that there's probably inventions that've been shelved by different corporations that want to know that uh, you know uh, that it would revolutionize the uh, addiction that we have to uh, the corporations that, that that provide us with powers. Oh yeah, and there's, uh, there's just got to be more more ways to be able to tap into uh, uh, the energy that's created by the sun, and uh, and is, is there more than just solar pow- pow- panels out there? Well, there, uh, there absolutely is. There's of course solar photovoltaic, solar electric panels, but there's also solar thermal panels that are used in heating water or heating heating a glycol, and then it goes into a tank and has a heat exchanger to where you can heat the water in your water heater so it it complements your water heater so there's really cool systems out there mm-hmm. where they can stand alone you can have water going through it and you can heat it on a, in a panel on your roof uh, and then come down and you can use it or use it with a glycol include well like in utah here we need to use glycol because it'll freeze in the winter uh, and use that as a heat exchanger so yeah absolutely the, those panels have been around for a long time and you can use those right now to help supplement your water heating and in an emergency You'll have some. You'll need some solar electric power to power those pumps. Yep. Uh, for for heating that water up on your roof, but yeah, absolutely. Take advantage of the technology and put those systems into use now, so that when power's out, you'll barely even notice it. You know, you actually <laughs> brought up a an interesting point. Harnessing that sun's energy. A lot of times we think of just solar panels as the only option. Mm-hmm. Um, think about green rooms or mm-hmm. greenhouses. Sorry, greenhouses are great because then it, it extends your your growing cycle, but you can also use those to heat your home. Mm-hmm. So you can take, if you've got a deck off the back of your house, if, if that's, you know, a good southern exposure or mm-hmm. maybe a, a, a east or west exposure during the day where it gets you some sunlight, take a bunch of mylar. Go to the Home Depot, get a bunch of the mylar uh, um, sheets, the drop cloths, mm-hmm. and you can actually create a greenhouse just running it from your roof line down to the deck down to the deck f- railing mm-hmm. um, and then close that and then allow that heat to trap in there and it'll help warm up your house. You can use fans to, to move that heat, uh, that heat inside. Well, if the power's it. off, you can't use a fan. Well, if you have, I have solar fans, so that's what oh, I'm thinking. Oh, show off. Well, and, and I think that's a good idea is also think of the passive ways that you can use the sun. So like you're saying, like a greenhouse, uh, if you have a southern or, or, or western facing home, add, add a, a balcony on there, enclose it, make it a, make it a greenhouse or a sunroom which really heats up in the winter, and then use that to force that air into your house somehow to heat it up during winter and, and decrease your heating bill and increase your comfort. Absolutely. I like the comment you made about how the pioneer, pioneers or something to the effect that the people of the past were figuring out ways to uh, uh, do things without power, and I'm sure that there's probably steel pumps out there that are maybe hand-cranked. Yep. Mm-hmm where you don't have to rely on uh, electricity to, to run, run them, um, or a combination of, of, of uh, the two. I was thinking of a fan. When you mentioned fan, I was thinking of those bikes, uh, exercise yeah, bikes yeah. that have the, uh, the the fan that goes mm-hmm. uh, turns as you're exercising. You know, that could be Absolutely. another option. That's a great option. Too. Well, that'll keep you warm because you're exercising. Yeah, you don't well, be moving, too. <laughs> Kind of like Silent Green, where uh, the uh, in that movie where yeah, uh, yeah. 
Charles Heston's is on that to generating bike to, to create that the electricity, that kind of thing. You I know? need to put that on my list on Amazon. I need to buy that buy that movie. Soylent Green. Soylent Green. There we go. On your list. Well, hey, thank you so much for your call. We got some more callers. We're gonna we're gonna hop on and take these yeah, guys. Thank you. Hey, thanks for calling K Talk. You are on the air. Yeah, you were talking about the back porch sunrooms. Yeah. Um, I actually did the Myler for probably ten or twenty years. Well, about 10 or 12 years, and my wife finally got tired of how it looked in the mm-hmm. winter. So, KSL.com, I got five sliding patio door glasses for free from, you know, people to skim mm-hmm. away for free on the mm-hmm. free section. Mm-hmm. And a really cool thing to do is to take those sliding patio door glass mm-hmm thingies and and put them on your back porch you with close your liquid back porch nail i have thought of that I and you've got to you've got to be able to vend it so you got to have a screen system in where you you know you can open the doors because in the dead of winter when it's like majorly freezing i live in farmington mm-hmm. it gets to be 98 to 100 degrees in that out in that thing yeah that's wow. during the day and i grow stuff all all season out there in that room very cool. Just, but That's the sliding awesome. the sliding glass doors on uh, KSL dot com that are free all the time are are a good way to go. So well, we'll anyway, I might have to beat you to the punch next time. <laughs> <laughs> see you guys. door pops up, I'm there. Let's see who wins. Hey, thank you so much <laughs> for your call. Thanks, uh, you bet. Have a good one. You, you too. too. And and there are a lot of different ways you can uh, can take advantage of the of that type of solar gain. Uh, back in the 70s, uh, I don't know if you remember seeing these panels up on the roof. They looked like solar thermal panels, not really solar electric panels. It looked like solar thermal panels. And what they were doing is actually collecting the heat from the sun and using a fan to force that air into the house. It was very inefficient. It was horrible, and they didn't last for very long. And they've uh, the ones I've seen on houses in my neighborhood have, are, are since gone. But you can improvise that, kind of like a solar oven. If you think how a solar oven works, sitting out in the, th- the sun, it's a, basically a box that collects light and traps it in with a piece of glass. You can do the same thing, improvise that, get creative. Okay, how do I capture all the sun coming in this window? Or, or if I don't have a window that faces directly south, how can I capture that and redirect that heat into the house? So there's a lot of different ways you can get creative. Um, and, and talking about creative, you know, we're talking about uh, how to heat our house. And, and obviously, if you have a... F- a fireplace, uh, it's not nearly as effective as a as a stove, a wood-burning stove or a, a wood a stove that you can cook on um, because you lose a lot of heat out of the chimney. But you also have to keep in mind, okay, how am I going to clean that? If we're using it for an extended period of time, chimneys need to be cleaned. And again, kind of looking back to our ancestors, the pioneers, those who you know th- lived without electricity for generation for th- literally thousands of years, uh, what did they do? I mean, they had to clean their chimneys, they had to clean their flues, um, because that, that creosote, that soot, would build up and catch fire. So, of course, that's where chimney sweeps came in. Yep. And you can get those at yeah. Ace has them. You can uh, do it yourself. Ace Hardware. And Actually, absolutely. You know, uh, I just forgot the name of the place. Smith & Edwards, one yep. of my favorite stores. Cause and, uh, and I'm sure that Cal Ranch probably has them as well, IFA. I would hope they do. So just a kit to clean it, and you can use a power drill. Uh, w- with a chimney sweep kit and, and do it yourself from you can do it from inside or you can do it from the roof. Are there other ways? I mean, that's kind of the only way I know. I of. read one this 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 just You're last smiling. night as I did my research. I'm good. smiling. This was hilarious, uh, and uh, this was probably I think it was a comment that he was either Thomas Jefferson or, or someone of the founders said, throw a couple chip- chickens in your chimney and let them flail around, and that'll help clean out the soot. I hope you can <laughs> s- hear how hard I'm shaking my oh head. Oh, my no. goodness. That was, I thought that was hilarious. That was, so that was a joke? No, that was serious. They were they actually did serious. That. Throw a couple of chickens in your chimney, obviously when there's no fire in there, d- and that'll help clean out well, the soot. Well, if there is a fire there, you're prepping dinner. Right, you're making dinner, too. Two, so. two birds with one <laughs> stone. That was with bad. With one fireplace. One fireplace. Okay, okay. So, so get creative and... and uh, yeah, don't hold back, and it tr- you know you can try anything. Like like you say, you know I got to clean this out. I don't have time. Throw a couple chickens in there. I mean, <laughs> that's hilarious. How hilarious is that? That's it. and and that just goes to to tell me all the different tricks and and secrets that we've lost over the years of how to stay warm, of how to prepare ourselves for winter, and how to live through winter and difficult times that we need to learn again. That's funny. Well, we got one more caller. Let's take this caller. Hey, thanks for calling K Talk. You're on the air. What have you got for us for winter prep? Oh, we lost it. Oh, gone. call back. We, we lost you. Call back. So we're, we're still talking to winter prep, things you can do to kind of keep keep warmer in the winter, things you can do to better prepare yourself and your family. 
Um, fuels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuels. That was the next. We on need my to list talk about there. fuels. So number one, first and foremost, always, always, always have backup fuels at home. Mm-hmm. Um, extra couple ga- gallons, probably twenty gallons of, of mm-hmm. fuel for your cars. Mm-hmm. Never let your car go below half tank. Yeah, absolutely. But then have have propane you can cook with. Have you know? There's other oils and, and kerosene. Kerosene. And yeah, but there's you know fuel can be dangerous. To, to store, especially gasoline in particular, but you know if you're obviously going to have a wood burning stove, you need to stock up on your wood, and that's one thing that the, that our, that our, I want to say pioneers would do, and our ancestors would do is they would be cutting wood. Obviously, they need, need to cook all year long, and so they'd have a wood pile just to cook with, but they would stock up right at this time of year with the make the wood pile as big as possible because it's n- no fun to cut wood in winter. I mean, that's just so you stockpile it up for winter. And, you know, that's something I, d- I did for, you know, my, my, my grandpa. We'd go up and cut his uh, his uh, stockpile of wood for the winter, and, and you know, he'd heat his entire place from his uh, little wood-burning stove. And uh, so wood is, is, I think, number one on the list. Uh, you got have to, have to have to have a source. You've got to be prepared. You've got to plan ahead. But also, like Scott was saying, you know, I try and keep, yeah, 20 gallons or so of gas in a separate shed away from the garage, you know, where it's where it's safe and yep. uh, v- that's you know can be very concerning, but propane is fantastic. Oh yeah. If you've got a barbecue, that's one one area you can mm-hmm. cook in, cook on, especially mm-hmm. if you've got a, a hot plate on that barbecue. Um, but other things, another fuel that people don't think about are candles. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially tea candles cuz mm-hmm. you can use those for example with a herc oven to yep. bake your food. You can use them yep, with a I've with got a, one of those. terracotta pots to heat an mm-hmm. entire room. And there's plans for that. We we should share that on our, on yeah. our social media page. Kay. There's plans for that. It's super easy. For like fifteen bucks, you've mm-hmm. got a, a room heater, a radiant heat from just simple candles. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't put off a lot of smoke, so it's safe to do inside in in that one small room. You've got your whole family confined in. Uh, but yeah, candles are are fan- and you can even learn to make candles. You know, right from scratch too. You can. That, and that, uh, there's so many things you can do. Um, we want you to get creative in your life. We want you to be better prepared. Our whole purpose behind doing this show is to help the community. Um, we are not the experts. We're, we're fantastic fans of prepare, preparedness. We're getting there. We're, uh, we're trying to bring in more people to help every week to help us. But because of you, that's why we do the show. This is, this is our one-year mark. Next week, we're going to have a special show. So special tune in. One year. Of our special edition of awesomeness. So join us next week on K-Talk AM 630. We're signing off for now, but thank you so much for being part of the show. We spend our money. Concur.